This video is sponsored by Squarespace. I have spent the past six months using a Sony a7R5 as my primary camera for pretty much everything. I've shot studio portraits, on location portraits. I shot some engagement photos for a friend in the mountains of Hawaii. I even took it to Portugal where I shot some landscape photos, did some street photography, I even did some vlogging with it. After around 10,000 shutter actuations, I can say that this is my favorite Sony camera ever. Matter of fact, I will be switching from the Sony A1 to this camera. That might sound crazy, but by the end of the video, I think you will understand why. So the first video that I made for this camera, it was the launch video. One of the things that I really praised this camera for was for its auto white balance because it was just more consistent. It gave me those, it gave me consistently better skin tones in the studio. See, I ran a test against my Sony A1 and with the Sony A7R5, I wasn't getting that yellowish tint on the skin that I was getting on the A1. Now, I knew that this is a white balance thing because when I matched them up with the gray card, I was getting pretty similar results. But as someone that has ADHD, I tend to forget to use a gray card. So I like the ability to pick up a camera and just use it and know that I'm gonna get good results. I hear a lot of people that shoot Sony that talk about this yellowish kind of tint look on in, in their flash photos or in their photos in general. And there's something that I've noticed with previous cameras as well. It definitely needs a little bit more yellow, but you don't really notice it until you compare it to other brands. With the A1, it was very consistent. Auto white balance gives you like a yellowish look. I mean, it really is there. And I saw it there and with the A7R5, it just corrected that for me. So that right there was a big deal for me as a studio photographer with, with ADHD, oh boy. So when I did go to Hawaii, this was my first time using the camera on location. And this is when I noticed something kind of weird happening with the white balance. So when I was shooting on the beach, at times when I would turn the camera from horizontal to vertical orientation, some for some reason, the white balance would shift. So it would go from warm and then it would go to cool. And all I did was just rotate the camera to shoot vertical or, you know, landscape. And I noticed that a couple of times that was happening. I was getting inconsistent white balance. See, normally this is something that I would have just ignored because it is something that is so easily fixable in post. You know, I also had my Fuji X100B around my neck that I use as my 35 millimeter lens so that I don't have to keep switching out lenses every time I wanted, let's say a wider shot. And looking at those shots, my white balance didn't fluctuate at all, which was kind of surprising to me. So I don't know what was going on there because I didn't have any other inconsistencies with the camera. If you own an A7R5, have you ever experienced something like this? Let me know in the comments. Now the new AI autofocus that's in the A7R5 with the human pose estimation, it, it's been so good that it almost makes this camera nice. boring to use. And I'm being like half serious when I say that. It doesn't matter if the model that I'm shooting is looking at me turned to the side or even walking away from the camera. It's rarely ever going to miss. But to be fair, it's not like I was missing a lot of shots with my Sony A1 anyways. It's just that like now you don't really have to really think at all. Like, oh, well, do I need to switch my point here? Or it's grabbing her arm because her back is turned to the camera. You don't got to think anymore. The camera is always looking for the head or the eye. When I was taking pictures of my boy and his wife on those cliffs, you know, it didn't matter if I had the big rocks or leaves in the foreground because uh, I was playing with my compositions. It didn't matter. And even at ISO 10,000 with near pitch darkness, the autofocus did not miss. It just, it grabbed them from, even though they were so far away, it, it always locked onto them. It always put a box around them. Now, this is the one thing that I can say about the A autofocus, okay? It's not perfect. Just, you know, the A1, for example, is like the best version of the old autofocus. This new AI autofocus can at times act a little glitchy and be unsure of what it wants to focus on, but that doesn't happen very often. The only thing that I would 
like for it, you know, to be improved or added on is the ability to quickly switch between eyes using the joystick like I can on Canon and Nikon cameras without needing to map a custom button for it. If you have seen any of my previous videos regarding Sony cameras and their screens, I normally give Sony a lot of hell for the quality of their rear screens. Because I shoot with all the other brands, I shoot with Canon and Nikon, and their screens are so much nicer, so much more crisp. Forget about what the numbers say. The screens just look freaking amazing. Now, this new four-way screen that's on the A7R5, it might have an inf it might have inferior quality, but I'll take that inferior quality any day of the week if that means that I can tilt for photography and swivel out for video. Just a year ago, everyone wanted a swivel screen on everything, and now a swivel screen to me is like an inconvenience because of this, okay? It's one of those yeah. things that you don't know that you're missing out on until you try it for yourself. Now, for me specifically, and this may also cater to you, I make content for the internet, you know, as a full-time job on YouTube. When I would go somewhere, travel, I would feel like I need to bring two camera bodies because I need one with a swivel screen and then I bring my Sony A1 for photography. This camera really hits both spots like on the money, the G spot right there, okay? It flips out to the side if I ever wanna do some talking head stuff. Honestly, this is also great for like, even when I'm doing studio photography, I wanna test out the lights. Sometimes I'll do this. I'll, put, I'll flip the screen and take a test shot and see how the lighting looks. That's one thing I do miss. The little, it's the little things that matter, you know? And now the ability to also just tilt it up. Videographers out there, you know the struggle sometimes when you always have to flip your screen out to the side. It's bumping on the HDMI cord, or you know you get your you don't get your line straight, or you know it, it's more of a bigger footprint. Being able to go any way with the screen makes this camera the ultimate content creator camera, the ultimate just do everything camera for me. This screen gives this camera so much value that I'm willing to downgrade from the Sony A1 to this camera and give up a lot of those benefits just for this, mostly just for this. That just goes to show that just because the camera is more expensive and has more features, doesn't mean that it's the best camera for you. This is a great example of that. The image quality that I got out of this camera did not surprise me. I expect the top tier image quality, and that's exactly what I got out of this camera. I felt like I got top tier with the A1 as well. I actually did a video comparing the Sony A7R5 to the OG A7R, the version one that came out in 2013. And the and image quality overall has progressed very slowly throughout the years. And in my opinion, has definitely peaked around when the A7R 3 yeah, came out. Judging the images that I took on the beach, yeah, I think I'm gonna use some of this as a the amount of dynamic range that I was able to pull out the files just still kind of blows my mind. How much information you're able to pull out, the clarity of the images, how much I can zoom in and just how much detail there is. It's, it's pretty like ah. intoxicating when you're editing, but also puts a little strain on your computer. I'm not gonna lie. And if 61 megapixels is more than you'll ever need, this camera allows you to choose between a large, medium, and small lossless compressed file size. So I normally shoot medium lossless and it gives me the file size of an A7 IV, which is much more reasonable. Now, when I took photos of my boy and his wife, I was taking, I started off taking photos at ISO 1600 and images look perfect, beautiful, clean. I started to hover around 6,400. This is when they were complete silhouettes. Images look amazing. It's just that I could not pull them from the files without getting a lot of digital noise, which is fair. I mean, it's it's 6,400 and they're a freaking silhouette. The shots that I took at 10,000, um, I shot them really dark because again, I probably would need to use 20,000 ISO to properly expose them. So I try to boost up the exposure a little bit. Images, you know, it fell apart right away. So I think overall though, I was really happy with the performance. Um, as long as I didn't bump the exposure too much, 10,000 was actually usable. Didn't get a lot of digital noise. I was pretty happy with the low light. 
the ergonomics and the build quality of the a7r5 this is where i'm gonna have the most complaints okay so back in october when sony was briefing me on this camera prior to launch they told me that this camera had the same body ergonomics buttons as the sony a7 IV. but this is the thing although there's very little to dislike about the ergonomics of the a7 IV, i remember how disappointed i was how the camera felt in my hand coming from the sony a1 it's just that the, the a7r5 felt like i was holding a hollow piece of plastic so it's lighter than the a1 but it just doesn't feel premium doesn't feel like it cost almost four thousand dollars i wish that they were to in, start making more rubberized textured grips canon has the most softest like comfortable grips on the planet and i just wish that this camera had that i feel like that would also make it feel less plastically in the hand because this has a more plastic texture on the grip and it has sharp lines i just feel like <clears throat> like I, w I wish they could improve that and i think that would make a drastic difference in how comfortable the camera is to hold in the hand you know the thing is that i've been using sony cameras for a very long time i have almost every single camera that's been released for the past four years so I'm, I'm this is what i'm used to but i can't help the fact that when i pick up a canon r5 r6 mark ii r3 those cameras just feel so good in the hand it's like sony so close i like the ergonomics just soften up that grip nice rubber texture on it where it just doesn't doesn't have this plastic texture to it, it just feels more premium it's all it needs now what about for video this camera is definitely an underrated camera for video i'll explain to you why but you know i i also i just wish that it could do a little bit more looking at the canon r5 which is around the same price point and was released a couple years ago the camera could do 4k 60 4k 120 even a little bit of 8k raw the canon r5 was definitely ahead of its time and i think that at that price point at the around the same price when i was hoping that the a7 r5 could do 4k 60 uncropped and maybe 4k 120 with a, with a crop but it shoots 8k not that i would ever use it now why is it underrated well this camera does have eight stops of image stabilization it doesn't really help so much when you're walking but more when i'm doing like a panning b-roll shot handheld i found that it does give a smoother look than any of my other previous sony cameras i can only imagine with the new ZV-E1, which is an amazing content creator camera, having that dynamic active stabilization combined with this eight stop stabilization, that'd be a killer combo for sure. A couple of downsides of using a Sony a7R5 for video is that the 4K 60P does have a crop just like the Sony a7 IV. And when you're shooting 4K, it is pixel binning, meaning that technically the footage isn't going to be as sharp as a camera that's reading the full width of the sensor, like the A7S III, for example. But look, in the real world, I think the footage looks amazing. And I've never thought to myself that the video coming out of this camera was not as crisp as my A7S III, FX3, A7 IV. I think that this camera being more photography focused, it having s log 3 it being pretty much a camera that I could work put into my workflow uh, seamlessly with my a7s3 fx3 a7 IV because I also have the option of putting digital audio so I can put my k3m which I'm filming with right now it's a k3m going into a Sennheiser mic here going directly in the camera this is completely baked in audio I can mount this camera put my k3m and get XLR quality audio out of this camera. So I could plop this down and, be, and it could become an, a complete studio camera for me, uh, all while being a juggernaut photography camera. So this is truly a content creator's little dream camera if you do photography as well. All right, before I wrap up this video with my closing thoughts, I want to tell you about my sponsor for today's video, that's Squarespace. 
If you have been looking to start a website, blog, or an online store, you need to check them out ASAP. Every entrepreneur needs a website, and with Squarespace, you don't need to have any kind of graphic design skills to start. It's so easy to use. You have 24-7 customer support. If you ever get bored of the look, you can choose from a bunch of pre-made templates and switch everything up at a click of a button. You can also start your own online store like I did where I sell my Lightroom presets and my retouching tutorial to make some passive income. If you wanna check them out for yourself, use the coupon code Manny and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. So why am I going to essentially be downgrading to the A7R5 from the Sony A1? Look, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna miss the 1400 flash sync speed especially in the studio. I'm gonna miss having the ability of shooting 4K 120p and having access to that 30 frames per second when I need it. And even being able to shoot over 1 8,000th of a second with the electronic shutter for those moments when I'm taking pictures in very bright daylight. Look, as a content creator, having that four-way tilt screen adds so much value to this camera. For someone like me specifically, that I'm willing to give all that up. Now, I wanna be very clear. I would not consider doing this if it wasn't for the screen. Like not even the new AI autofocus and all the little small improvements throughout the camera would not be enough to give up my Sony A1, my Swiss army knife. That really just goes to show you that there isn't the perfect camera out there. You know, you just have to choose the one that's perfect for you. Ooh. That's a great way to end the video right there.